God bless you. God bless you. 7,000 Club, God bless you. Yeah, this is uh, Tuesday night. And uh, I usually come on on Wednesday where we have breaking news. Breaking news. I'm sort of tired of people who's supposed to be leaders and they are not the two parts, the modeling example, God bless you, of strength and victory. And they promise liberty themselves, they promise liberty, and they themselves are bound. And uh, God bless you, God bless you, Eric McClendon, and all of you that's viewing this program tonight. Tamara, God bless you. Uh, Laverne, God bless you. Kendall, God bless you. Glad to have you. Yeah, I'll be glad to lecture. Yes, I'll be glad to do that. I want you to listen to me real good because what has happened, uh, it is a scourge on the body of Christ. God bless you. Uh, God, yes, God, uh, said in so many words to David, you have caused my enemies to blaspheme my name. And uh, Dre, God bless you, divine wisdom. God bless Tiffany. God bless you. Uh, I'm sort of, I'm sort of tired of this kind of foolishness, scandals everywhere in the body of Christ, the church. We're supposed to be the ecclesia, the called out ones. We're supposed to be sanctified, set aside, and holy unto God. We're supposed to be reflection of victory, vicarious, representing God on the earth anthropomorphically, God vicariously being represented by us as though mm, God himself is on the earth in us. And the righteousness of God, which is to do what is right. And a hypocrite is one who's a great actor, acting a part, and there's a difference between uh, a flower that's real and a one that is plastic, and sometimes they look so much like each other, it's hard to tell the difference until you look close, and then when you touch that plastic flower, then you know it's not real. Well, we got some plastic flowers in the church. Those who are not real, they have a form of godliness, but deny the power thereof. You see, I'm from the streets, and I, God bless you, deputy, I'm from the streets, and we do not like hypocriting Christians. Man, if I go to hell, I want to go, I want to go rooting, tooting, cutting, and shooting, and I want to be so drunk until I don't know I'm in hell till the fire hit me. But I'm not going to go, I'm not going to hell by the way of the church. And these people are standing in the way of sinners. 
sitting in the seat of the scornful. Oh, the church is in trouble because we have these jackasses trying to lead God's people. You know, I preach that, don't let the ox and the ass plow together. And an ass is a narcissistic, vain, stupid person. Don't let them plow together. They're incompatible. Light and darkness, not compatible. The world and the church is an impossible marriage. But we got these hypocrites in the church. Now I'm on, I'm going to give you some scriptures, and I'm on I'm going to call some names. Now you know I talked about uh, I posed the question: Is it right to judge, to expose error, and to call names? And I'm known for calling names. The police call your name. On the news, if you do something wrong, they will call your name. They don't say, well, certain bank got robbed by a certain person. We can't call their names right now. No, Bobo robbed the bank. Bobo has been arrested. Here, his picture. All right? Now, if he's not arrested and he's on the run, they still put his picture up. And if anybody sees Bobo, Anybody see him, call this number. And there's what you call fiduciary responsibility. And that is to turn in these pedophiles. Turn them in, these predatory pedophiles. And so we have a story it was reported to me. Let me read my scripture because some people don't, they don't understand. Judge ye not. Judge ye not lest ye be judged. Matthew 7 and 1. Listen, listen, listen. But here God said to uh, Paul, oh, Paul got the inspiration and the word from the Lord. And that's my favorite scripture, 1 Corinthians 5, 1 through 13. A fornicator is described in this particular chapter. Paul judged, all right? And the verse 3, the man, even though he was absent, that is, Paul was absent. <laughs> even though I wasn't there, Paul said, Mm, but it was reported to me. It was reported to me. Now watch this. I want you to get this now. Without evidence. Without evidence. Not being there. But yet it was reported to me. And Paul said, I halfway believe it. But he understood there was a young man that was having a sexual relationship with his stepmother, his father's wife. Paul said, you should have judged him. You, that's right. You should have judged him. See? So all that judging not know, we, watch this, a person who is able to discern between good and evil has at least one of the major marks of spiritual maturity. Watch this. But strong meat belonging to them that are full grown, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised exercise to discern both good and evil. That's Hebrews 5 and 14. So do you know we have what you call intuition? We have discernment. And intuition and discernment means to know without knowing. Without knowing. 
You know, I taught you about the thalamus. The thalamus determines what is spiritual and what is not. Mm. So you're not deceived. Even though Paul said, I wasn't there. <laughs> I don't have any evidence. But it was reported to me. And his discernment says it is true. You should have judged this, brother, instead of you bucking and shouting and, and speaking in some old false tongue. You should come to your senses and be sober and judge. And not only that, but I taught that we ought to judge, and that is, oh, I love this word, discern, and then distinguishing a clear discrimination, discerning, judging, and not only that, discerning of spirits. Do you know we can discern when somebody's crooked and evil? We can discern. Hallelujah. We, can, we have the power of discerning spirits, judging by evidence whether they are evil or of God, and Strong also agrees that it means to judge. Mm. Those who are unwilling or incapable of discerning or judging between good and evil are, in this matter, revealing either their disobedience or their immaturity. It is our responsibility to judge. Going back to 1 Corinthians 5, 1 through 13, we are, it is an edict. It is an edict. It's not something that you can just shirk that responsibility. It's an edict. It's a charge. And we got a lot of stuff going on in the church that people are afraid to talk about. Oh, you might hurt Revan. Oh, you might hurt this one and that one and the other. Forget his title. He's not to be respected because he now is an anathema. He's not a topaz, a two, uh, yeah, topaz or two pods. Yeah, two parts. That is a a modeling example. We need some examples. Paul said, "I'm an example. Follow me as I follow Christ. Follow me as I follow Christ. I'm not following these bozos, these church pimps." I'm not following somebody that not living right. And, you know, I said, he who would heal the lepers must not be one. Now, this Bloomer, Bloomer, man, you are scourged on the body of Christ. Bloomer. You have brought shame to the body of Christ, the church. Bloomer, it was reported to me. Mm. First of all, I want you to know we have the biblical right to expose false teachers. And I discern that this Bloomer is a false teacher false prophet and religious leaders. John the Baptist called the Pharisees and Sadducees the religious leader, the religious leader of his day, a generation of vipers, mm, snakes. They crawl and sneak into the church and turn the grace of God into lasciviousness. The grace of God, a license to sin and not feel any remorse, no lamentation, no regret. 
no matanoa, no chains, epistrepho, no chains, no shame, no shame to change. Uh, that's the first time I ever said that. Shame to change. <laughs> if you're not ashamed of what you've done and feel remorseful and feel a sense of, I shouldn't have done that. And then here's the trick. Here's the trick. Oh, ask God to forgive me. You have to go to the presbyters of the church, go to somebody that can declare you clean. The, the priest must declare the leper to be clean. Do you know you must subject yourself to those who are in authority in the church so they can validate your forgiveness by your action and because of their discernment? and because of their maturity, and because they have the fiduciary right to judge and to declare the leper to be clean. Go to the priest. Oh my God, you're gonna have somebody that you are accountable to that will tell you the right thing. That will tell you you cannot, you cannot sodomize a teenager and get away with it. You cannot sodomize. You cannot be a homosexual. You should not be in the pulpit. And that old game, oh, the Lord forgive me. The Lord has forgiven me. Well, bring fruits of repentance, fruits of repentance. So here we must, we must judge, all right? And the Bible admonish, admonish us to expose, to expose. And listen, let me get to this part that uh, one, very, very successful mega church pastor. Somebody said that, uh, did you see the video? Yes. What did you think about it? Oh, it's, oh, it's terrible. What do you think he should do? Well, he should have paid he should have paid Jimmy Battle. He should have paid him off. Get ahead. He should have gotten ahead of the story and paid the boy off. That's what they do. That's what Charles Blake did. He paid the mother or the grandmother and to be quiet and and uh, paid off, uh, what's my, let me see, his name, paid off him and his father and mother. Yes, that's what they do. They pay people off to be quiet. Uh-huh. Now listen, they pay people off to be Quiet. Shh. Here you go. Here you go. To be quiet. But whatever, listen. Get your Bibles and Luke 8 and 17. And this is this is the word. This is the word of God. This is Jesus talking. Jesus says, for there is nothing hidden, mm, nothing hidden that will not be disclosed or revealed. Nothing. You can't get away. God, Jesus, God, 
and Jesus, they are in charge of forensic, forensic files. And they are in charge of cold cases. You know, I saw um, forensic uh, files that a man had killed uh, his Philippine uh, concubine. That is, you know, a wife, secondary, and he used her for sex, and she got pregnant, and he didn't want the young lady to have the baby. So he kills her, murders the young lady, and put her in a barrel in the basement of the house. And eventually he sold that house and did not move the barrel where the woman is stuffed in the barrel. And she was there for 30 years. 30 years. And they sold the house. And the man they sold the house to, one day found that barrel. And the stench was so obvious and so bad until he called the police. And they opened the barrel and here this body is in the barrel. And they arrested that man after 30 years. Well, before they could ar arrest him, he went to his neighbors and, and got a gun and blew his brains out. See, when your belly becomes your God, your desire becomes your God, your conflagrational, uncontained fire of lust controls you. After a while, it's going to bring destruction. It can destroy your reputation. It can destroy your ministry. It can, it can destroy the respect that people have for you. And God knows I am animate. I am relentless when somebody brings on the distrust or disgrace on the church of Jesus Christ that he lived and died and bled for this church. Mm. I vicariously represent his emotion when he goes into the temple and he chase out the money changers and the vipers and snakes. You know, I said something about boanthropy, that disease of the mind that make you act like an animal. And then it's full-blown flesh. Full-blown. Flesh has taken over. The old man is in control. And so when somebody like Bloomer, preaching everywhere, known to be in that circle, that circle, that uh, circle of prosperity, preaching, money, money cometh, uh, Ivy Hilliard, and, and all these that uh, espouse that doctrine of, let's say, prosperity. They don't understand the Greek word of uh, you ought to owe. It is a goodbye. I would that you prosper and be in health. And as you go on your journey, may your journey be safe. You ought to owe. May you arrive safely. <laughs> you ought to owe. I would that you prosper and be in health. 
even as your soul prosper. A prospering soul is not caught up into ostentation. It's not caught up into excessive. It's not caught up into surfeiting. Jesus said, don't let your heart be overcharged with surfeiting. You see, when you have an insatiable appetite, conflagration of fire of your desire, for you know it, you're not satisfied with this, that, and the other. You're not satisfied with your wife. You're not satisfied. So if you go, if you're not satisfied, you go out and get another woman. And if you're not satisfied with the house, you try to get another house. And you spend more than you make on things you don't need to impress people you don't like. And you find yourself in a deep hole. And for you know it, the devil will tell you to do this and that and the other to satisfy that insatiable appetite. Then the Bible said, be content. But these, these prosperity preachers, they are diaphanous. They are shallow. They don't have no real depth. They are one-dimensional, and they are deceived by momentary, momentary distractional joys. Man, everything is vanity. That's when you come to that maturation of, I rather have Jesus, and set your affection on the things above, and do not sacrifice eternity on the altar of the temporary. All this stuff is temporary, man. The big houses and and big cars, all that stuff. And you know what Paul says, school baller, school baller, school baller, which means doo-doo. You driving doo-doo. You living in doo-doo. Metaphorically, he says, it is waste. It is waste. It is way scubala, doo-doo. You're going to hell for doo-doo. Mm, 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 dung. Paul said, I count it all as dung. And when you get into that spirit of kenosis, kenosis, that I'd rather ride a donkey than to come into Jerusalem on a decorated chariot like Solomon. But when you know who you are, when you know who you are, you can ride a temporary donkey because you know there's a stallion in your future. <laughs> ride on King Jesus. Ah, listen, these diaphanous, shallow preachers, I can't take them. They make me sick. You living in the church, pimping the church. And how much is the preacher in the window? Just give him nice clothes and shoes and a house and give him money. Money cometh. Money cometh. And you goeth to hell. So listen, mm. I'm going to call some names in a minute, but I'm going to let everybody know that uh, we call names. We call names. So Bishop Jordan, E. Bernard Jordan, and Larry, Larry, Larry Reed. Uh, I heard when you suggested that this young man, Jimmy Battle, that you wanted him to tell his story without calling names. But the, the boy set y'all up. Well, can you tell, this is E. Bernard Jordan, He's, he's so smooth. You know, I like some of the things he have said down through the years, but he's wrong this time. 
And I'm going to show you in the word of God. And he said, don't, can you tell your story without calling the names or the name? But he has a litany of names. And but Bishop Jordan says, can you tell your story? You know how he talk. Can you tell your story without calling names? And then Larry said, I'm going to put it on my YouTube and Facebook, and I'm going to block out the names. Block, blot out the name. We're going to blot out the name Bloomer. So now they are trying to cover for him. But the Bible didn't say, did not say that. Listen, David had sinned. He committed murder. And mm, adultery. He orchestrated a plan that Uriah would come home and he wanted Uriah to lay with his wife, but that Uriah was such a devoted, loyal soldier, black brother, black brother. David even got him drunk and he still wouldn't go home. That's kenosis right there. That, that is right for you to have and you should have, but he denied it. That is kenosis right there, right there. And every preacher ought to live in a state of kenosis. I know I can have, Paul said, uh, you know, we, we have all things but possess nothing. Ah, kenosis, kenosis. And here David, send the man to the front line to be killed. The man got killed, murder. But when Nathan comes, the prophet comes, he didn't come to cover things up. He comes to reveal all things that's done in the dark shall come to the light. Nothing hidden. And the prophet says to David the king, thou art the man. So we shouldn't cover up. I know people say, you know, there's a scripture that says that uh, it is the, to the glory of God to, to hide or cover a thing but it's to the honor of man to discover. So God, he gives us something to do down here. He could have done it, yes, but he gives us something to do to bring honor, to bring honor. It's the honor for me to expose a hypocrite and lying I'm talking about playing a game, a pimp, a church pimp. I'm talking about this. I'm talking about master manipulator, this anthropomorphic demon, this persuasive, loquacious, talkative, slick talking demon. You know, Jesus said to Peter, get thee behind me, Satan. So anytime there's evil and anything that opposes righteousness and bring a stumbling block to anybody, I want you to know that's Satan. Jesus called Peter Satan. One of his great disciples, he called him Satan because Satan is behind every lie Every trick, every uh, adulterous affair, every homosexual act, 
And what's so terrible about it, God's eye is in every corner. And I've been saying this, he can see a black rock. Listen, he can see a black ant on the top of a black rock in the darkest night. And I say this again, God is in charge of cold cases. 30 years, that woman was in the barrel. But your sins will find you out. I said your sins will find you out. Why you want to sin in the first place? Because that's your depravity coming forth. Man, I need something to contain me and sub subdue my iniquities. Man, I don't need to give in to Earl. I, I need to tell Earl, no, you cannot have that woman. No, you cannot steal or you cannot lie. You can't teen naive, a 19-year-old naive young man that you seduced. You cannot do that and be saved. John told Herod, you can't have your brothers. You got to tell people, I mean, you got to look them in the face and say, you cannot do that and go to heaven. You cannot do that and be respected. Now watch this now. Is it right to call names? Uh, e. Bernard Jordan and Larry Reed. Let me take you through something. Is it right to call names? Paul named Peter publicly. And if you want to read it for yourself, that's, uh, uh, Lord have mercy, Galatians 2nd chapter 11 through 14. Peter was trying to play both ends. But when Peter was come to Antioch, Paul said, I withstood him to the face because he was to be blamed. But when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter before them all, if thou being a Jew, liveth at after the manner of the Gentiles, and not as do the Jews, why compelleth thou the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? Mm. Galatians 2nd chapter 11 through the 14th verse, the whole issue revolves around salvation by the law, all by grace. Peter trying to be the law and grace to be saved, but when the integrity and purity of the gospel is at stake, then we have no choice when it comes to the matter of exposing error and naming names. I call names. Paul named Demas for loving the world. Paul named Hymenaeus and Alexander. Oh, yes, Bishop Jordan, you was wrong when you say, tell your story without calling names. Paul named Hymenaeus and Philetus. Paul named Alexander the coppersmith. John named Diotrephes. And then Moses called the name of Balaam. And Jude exposed the error of Balaam, calling names. So I'm getting, and then, of course, Nathan said to David, thou art the man. But listen, I'm going to come back to this story. Hannah and I named King Jehoshaphat. All right, Jehoshaphat. And in many ways, Jehoshaphat was a good king, but he mistakenly forgot to practice religious separation. He caused the son to marry wicked King Ahab's daughter. That's Second Chronicles 18, the first chapter, and then 
the 21, well, let's say 18 and 1, and then 21 through uh, the verse, first verse through 6, he made an alliance with Ahab and went uh, to the battle of Ramoth, Gilead. And then he went to battle with him. And Hanani said to King Jehoshaphat, Shouldest thou help the ungodly? Shouldest thou help the ungodly and love them that hate the Lord? Shouldest thou help the ungodly and love them that hate the Lord? Listen, I want you to know we should not support anybody that's wicked like George Bloomer. Do not, do not view his programs. Do not buy his books and tapes because you are strengthening the hand of the wicked. And if you have anything to do with the sin of another, it is as though you have sinned yourself. So let me call some other names. Listen, when Bloomer, I gotta throw this in here, when Bloomer was talking to this young man, he dropped the F-bomb. Is that any language for a bishop or a minister? And the Bible said, let no incendiary words come out of your mouth. And that F-bomb, it is base. It is not, it's lower than common. It is base. That's the lowest you can do or say when you use the F word. That is as though you are in the world with that language. When you're born again, you should have a different language. Not just speaking in tongues, but a different language. And listen, when you are vulgar and use profanity, come from profane, which means to be secular, which means to be common, which is non-sacred. And you're supposed to have wholesome words. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. But out of the heart speaketh, you speak and your words have ensnared you. Your words have snared you, have trapped you, and it reveal your heart is not right with God. Your intellect, your will, your desire, your emotion, your desire was to have a young man to put your penis in the butt where the scubala comes out, where the doo-doo comes -doo, You're nasty. It is an abomination. And then hear your speech betrayed you. Vituperative, vituperative words, words that are not appropriate, harsh words, curse words. And then here's another one. Your words were uh, verbostic. Verbostic, unnecessary. Verbostic and vituperative words, unnecessary, ugly, stupid, a jackass, a donkey head. You're stupid. You're in the church so you can make a living, but you are not living. You are deceived. Vituperative words using, did y'all hear 
I know some of you, you need to get that video. Lord have mercy, you need to get the video and send it everywhere. Send it everywhere. And I want you to send this video everywhere because I'm putting the scriptures on these people. It's not about Bernard Jordan. It's not about Larry Reed. I want you to know Bernard Jordan did not die on the cross for you. He's just another nigger. And that's uh, Acts 13. Uh, Simeon was called nigger because he was black. I want this Jordan to know that you were wrong and I rebuke you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I just gave you scriptures where we supposed to call names and I've been doing it and going to continue to do it. And anybody that thank God for this platform that I can get on this video and call names. I said, call names and expose. So, Bloomer, your mouth is nasty. Your mouth is vile, vile. Your mouth is vituperative. And your words is verbostic, unnecessary for you to be cussing like that. And then these people trying to cover for you. All right? Who are the people that's trying to cover for you? Jordan wanted to cover for you. And Larry Reed wanted to cover for you. And then Ivy Hilliard, he knows about it. And he trying to cover for you. Jimmy Ellis trying to cover for you. Listen, Noel Jones trying to cover for you. And Mark Sharona is trying to cover for you. And yeah, Daryl Moore has that video. That go get it. And uh, there's another one out there. That's, and listen, Jamal Bryant trying to cover for you. Yeah, I'm calling your names because y'all a bunch of nigers. That's in the Bible, y'all. And guess what? Shirley, Shirley, Shirley sees a whole my mule. We need to hold you and the mule, all right? Hold my mule. We need to hold your mule and you. All right, your mule didn't talk, but you did. All right, you covered for this man. And what's so sad about it is that Bloomer, Bloomer seduced Jimmy Battle. Now, Pastor had him and Michael to take Bloomer back to the hotel. And he invites them in. Now, he must have sensed that these two men had some propensity for being effeminate or they were on the precipice or on the edge of homosexuality. All they, need, all they needed was somebody to just push them in that direction. So... This bloomer, he sensed that these two young men might. He gambles to say, I'm going to invite them to my hotel room. And they went up to the hotel room. Bloomer goes into... Uh, the restroom and comes out naked with just his underwear, his boxes on. And lays in the bed and say, he poses the question and say, 
to uh, Jimmy Battles, what would you do if this room was full of homosexuals? Jimmy said, I would just get out of here and watch this seducing, slick spirit. Seducing spirit, like the serpent in the garden. And said, if you are not struggling with homosexuality, then you can just stay. See, pulling him in and invited him to lay in the bed with him. Now, I got to say, Jimmy, listen, you was 19 years old. You ought to know better than to get in the bed with a little, I mean, at that time, Bloomer was uh, big. So you can say you shouldn't have got in the bed with uh, Shamu. Or you should, shouldn't have got in the bed with Dumbo, that big elephant. You shouldn't have got in the bed with him. Man, if that was me, I'd knock him out. That's right. And if, oh my God, my son, we didn't let them go anywhere. Because somebody fooled with my son, I would have called, called the jail and said, I'm making reservation because I'm going to be there because I'm going to kill this nigger, all right? Touch my son? Where are the parents? Anyway, he gets in the bed with Bloomer and Bloomer had sex with that boy at the time, 19 years old. And he left, and the other young man named Michael, Michael stayed, and Bloomer gave him a shirt, or gave him some items, see? And Bloomer laid with him. And you know what? Bloomer said that uh, Eddie Long was his father, like father, like son. You got to watch who you uh, make your spiritual parent. Oh, you got to watch the mantle, <laughs> like John had. You got to watch the mantle. It's like John Hannah said, I wanted the mantle. I wanted the mantle. Oh, 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 a mother Shaw. Now I got her mantle, and it just makes me feel like a girl. Oh, oh, oh. Now you said, Eddie Long is your spiritual father. Look at what you're doing, poking boys, poking, poking little boys. Ah, dirty penis, dirty, dirty, dirty. Scubala, scubala, nasty, abomination. And then when you interviewed Carlton Pearson, he knows about it. Carlton Pearson is a sissified fool. He is a reprobate. He's a church reprobate. Never been in the streets. Well, if you get in the streets and let Bobo get him, oh, Bobo will turn him into a believer when Bobo get through with him. Big Bubba. That's what he need to do. Go to jail and see how you like that. And when you come switching in there, Bubba, Bubba will make you Carlton Pearson, Bubba will make him or make you his wife. You will be a believer trying to get out of there. You stupid. Yeah. Here's, here's another situation. 
I hope I'm covering this, that he laid with Michael. And Michael could not shake the experience, just like the victims of, of Eddie Long. Those boys, they said they can still smell his, perf his uh, cologne. And he can see, I mean, they can still feel him on the inside. See, when you lay with somebody, you become one with the person. And that person have to be cut out of you. That's right. Hallelujah. That's what you call soulish connection. Soulish connection. So Michael could not shake that experience. And not only that, what came out is that Bloomer, when he got through, well, he told uh, Jimmy not to say anything because if he say anything, that Bloomer would make him look bad. And all right, he had already gone to the church and told the leaders they need to watch Jimmy because he got a spirit on him. You see, that ain't nothing but diabolical wickedness coming through this man. And Michael, last year, overdosed because he was trying to anesthetize the pain by taking drugs. Taking drugs. And that's so sad. And this young man, uh, we heard it, this young man crying while Bloomer is grinning, making a joke out of it and then started dropping those F-bombs. Instead of him repenting, he now is joking, making a joke out of this, and got all these preachers covering him. But they don't have me. I'm not in that circle. And I'm going to talk and tell everything I know to tell on this monkey. Absolutely. I know Bloomer, and I tried to help him. And what's so bad about it, uh, Kevin Adele uh, uh, probably doing the Michael Jackson right now. He probably doing the Michael Jackson, the moonwalk, celebrating the fall of this dummy. And uh, anybody use him, you are using somebody that is a pedophile or he is one that will sodomize your sons. So I'm closing, but I wanted to get on tonight and I wanted to address this situation biblically, not by my opinion and feelings, no, the biblical account. So I've given you the word of God that we should judge, expose, and then call names. So I call some names tonight. All right, I want you that love this ministry. I want you to, I want you to subscribe, like, and share. Subscribe, like, and share. Let's get our numbers up. And then, listen, send this video everywhere. That's right. Send it everywhere. And then I want you all that can to make a donation. Make a donation by the way of Zelle. Yeah, thank you. By the way of Zelle. By the way of PayPal. By the way of uh, even Apple. By the way of Cash App. Yes, uh, you can use that. Uh huh. Has, oh, had a, yeah, he had a wife. The wife probably caught him with a boy. You know, Bloom is just wicked. You know, wicked. 
He's over, I think he's over in Africa for this preacher and the raising money and all that kind of stuff. That don't mean nothing. I'd rather have Jesus than temporary gold. Rather have Jesus than riches untold. And I'm on the wall and I'm watching and I'm doing a good work and can't come down. Here's another thing. He said he's the, he is, see, that's Gnosticism. He, he caught up into, well, you know, I have the greatest uh, deliverance ministry in the world. Yeah, how come you not delivered? He who would heal the lepers must be what you are stupid. You got the greatest deliverance ministry in the world. Man, you the biggest fool in the world. Just makes me sick. The old folks say, you make me sick. You make me sick. <laughs> oh, my mercy. So he promised liberty, but he himself are bound. Isn't that something? And let me say this to you. I don't trust no man if he's a heterosexual. I don't trust no man that don't have a wife. Because the Bible says, since uh, Elder Crawley found that scripture, the Bible says to avoid fornication. Oh, that's it. To avoid fornication. Let a man have his own wife. He didn't say for you to try to fast that away. I don't care how much you fast. There is a need for you to have a woman. Not always sexual, but two in the bed makes each other warm. All right? So I don't trust no I don't trust Noel Jones because he don't have no wife. I don't trust uh Brian Kahn, who is a con, don't have a wife. I don't trust Todd Hall. It was reported to me. He got babies everywhere. He's uh, uh, Prophet uh, Johnny Appleseed. I don't trust no man that don't have a wife. You are doing something. And if you don't like women, you love boys. That's right. Well... Jamal, I think him and his wife coming back together, I hope. Well, you know, he's had his sexual problems, and I hope he has contained it. Because if he mess around in Atlanta, his butt might fall off, and hair and everything will fall out. Because... <laughs> Man, you don't want to touch nothing in, uh, in Atlanta. Come on. No. I don't even like to drive through there. We hurry up and get through. Something might jump on your car. You never know. <laughs> oh, Lord, I'm telling you, this is a day in which we live. Man, my wife don't have to worry about me. No, no. Uh -uh. I'm going home to my wife. And now that we've gotten a little older, you know what I mean? I don't need all of that. That's right. I don't need all that. I just need my wife to be more than an object. She is a person. That's right. Praise the name of the Lord. All right, I'm closing. I'm closing. Don't forget uh, uh, March the 25th, 26th, and 27th, our spring conference. Our spring conference at the Shingle Creek Hotel in Orlando, Florida. That's right, Orlando, Florida. And come, come. And uh, we'll have a kickoff that Wednesday night. And then Thursday morning, we'll have prayer. And then we will have teaching from that great, great teacher, professor, PhD, Dr. James Bolton. Oh my God, we're gonna have a time. And then Friday morning, the same uh, prayer. 
and then teaching from Dr. Bolton and yours truly will close it out. Close it out on Friday night. I need some more uh, moderators and uh, we're going to get a list of you that have been faithful and we can depend upon you and we will want you to be a moderator. All right? But Sister Dolores has been doing a great job and we thank God. We thank God for her. All right. All right, I'm closing. May the Lord bless you real good. Uh-huh, that's right. One wife. That's right. Uh-huh. All right. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I'm not done. I'm going to keep on crying loud and spare not. I'm not in a cage. I'm free. And I call names. And if I see you face to face, I look you right to, in your face and say everything I'm saying right now. Because I've always been confrontational, especially in the church. You hypocrites. You bunch of hypocrites. You need to get out of the church. Go find a job somewhere. But don't stay in the church and pimp the church. You better be glad I'm not Jesus. I'd hit you with a, a bolt of lightning. I mean, right now. And your hips will fall off. Your eyes will come out. Yeah. Thumas. Mm. Oh, I feel God right now. I'm going to fight for Jesus. I'm going to fight for my Lord and Master, my Savior. I may not be much. And who am I? I'm just a voice crying in the wilderness. Oh, I'm closing, but I feel God right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your help. Thank you for your help. And I'm closing. 7,000 Club, thank you all. I wish you all would kick in and support because I'm not going to these churches because they, they're scared of me. They say I'm too radical. I'm too radical. They're, they're afraid of me. But I don't have to go if you all would kick in and say we're going to support Pastor Carter, Bishop Carter. And don't go to these churches. Go at your own risk. Go at your own risk. You don't know what you're going to find. You go to a church and Lord and mercy, got so many sissies and lesbians, they be looking at you. Oh, glad to see you. Oh. Oh, I liked what you got on. Ah, uh, get out of here. All right, I'm done. May the Lord bless you real good. I'll be back uh, tomorrow night. Got something else. I want to talk about Church of God in Christ and the uh, age limit. All right? Age limit. Uh, that's what I'm going to talk about tomorrow night. All right. God bless you and God keep you is my prayer. And all you wicked folks, especially Bloomer, have a bad day. Have a bad night. Have a bad morning. Have a bad evening. Have a bad lunch. Have a bad day. Have a bad life. Have a bad friend. Have some bad food. Have some ugly clothes. Have a bad car. Anything bad, I want you to have it and bring you into the reality of salvation. Good that I was afflicted. Sometimes trouble is good for you. All right, I'm closing. God bless you and God keep you. Saints, go to Earl Carter Ministry and, and, and make a donation. Come on, make a donation. And the Lord will bless you real good. God bless you. And I'll see you tomorrow night. Bye-bye.